Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to go on the oldies binge. We're going to work on the Garcia Mitchell uh, Made in France 600 series saltwater reels. And uh, they came in a variety. They were competitive with pen. They were fished in the 60s and the 70s and then largely put on a shelf uh, as the product was discontinued. But there's a variety of them out there. They all pretty much matched up with the pen series. I'll show you how to take apart one and clean it up. Uh, I don't get many of these come into the shop uh, other than people who just don't want them anymore and I've got quite a collection sitting on a pile of work to be done. But I did take one of these apart the other day when we were doing the um, uh, offshore angler one from Bass Pro and we found out that the mechanicals are the same so the design has endured. But Penn made a, uh, Penn, uh, Garcia made a couple of compete with Penn. These are the 602s and I believe this is 604 with the chrome rings. They competed with the 150, uh, I'm sorry, the 160 Beach Masters. <laughs> then you had a series of 622, 624. Uh, they competed with the Long Beach series and they both endured very well. Uh, both are great reels. Again, I don't see these fished very much anymore, but I do see a pile of them in my shop. So one of the things I just like to point out is the quality of this reel. It was quite uh, well engineered for the time. I am amazed by the chrome on this. So this reel looked like this one about a half an hour ago before I decided to clean it up before going on to uh, to do the internal repair video with you. But uh, if you find one of these out there you'll find uh, that they're quality high, high polished chrome. You'll probably find that they're all missing their badge uh, that tells you exactly what it is. In this case, I got a partial badge on this one. And you'll probably all find that they have a spider crack uh, at the burying side of the, um, the real plate gear side. It just, it's something that just, uh, just happens with all these reels. It's a weak point in the design. So let's get started. I'll show you how to take this apart, how to, uh, how to address the internals, and um, how to tune it up should you want to go use it or if you just want to make sure that it's working well mechanically uh, when you uh, put it out on your shelf for display. This is the old coffee grinder. They call it the coffee grinder handle. It's a nice round heavy duty knob. It's held in place by a little uh, uh, lock nut. <coughs> you take that off. And I have to be honest with you, I don't have the wrench that works with this, uh, this nut. Uh, so there's two options there. One, you can use a channel lock pliers. But I found that the Pen 60 nut handle came uh, came in that tool. If you have the Pen 60, this is an aftermarket one that has a 60. For some reason, it's able to grasp that nut and pull that off. So if you have one of them, it's better to use that tool rather than risk marring something with a pliers. So we'll t we'll back that nut off. Then I like to take my handles off by uh, backing the the star drag nut off as opposed to trying to to lever the handle off. And you can just, uh, as you'll work on these things, you'll see that uh, the quality of the metal just really is unbelievable. And then take that out. All right, so here's the first cork on this one. You'll see that there's four screws on this side. But if you turn over here, you know, you got two cross posts and uh, the real seat. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. So make a mental note that, uh, you know, two of these cross posts don't have uh, screws in them. And note where they are. They happen to be on the bottom. Uh, I always uh, tell folks as I do these, uh, these videos, uh, take pictures along the way so that you don't confuse yourself. If you're uh, just simply doing what I'm doing here and you're moving the gear side, uh, not a problem. But if you're going to take all those pieces off and clean them up like I did earlier, uh, you're going to have a problem if you put the cross posts back in the wrong position because the, uh, the side won't sit properly. So we're going to take these four screws out and uh, another point of noting, just like the pens, there's a longer screw and a shorter screw here. The shorter screws go in the bottom on the real seat, the longer ones go into those two cross posts there. So we'll take that off. And then what you're going to see on the inside is a different design mechanically than the pen reels. It has a, uh, uh, a little toggle for the free spool release that operates the uh, steel collar here which pushes down on this mechanism to release the spool for free casting. Under this there's going to be a, a, a spring here. There's also an anti-reverse dog that keeps the, the reel from going backwards. That's going to be sitting under this drag plate so you've got to be careful 
as you remove these pieces and parts that those springs don't fly. So I'm going to start by taking off this trim ring uh, that will expose the metal uh, here that, uh, that does that free spool release, that collar, you'll notice that pops right up. And then there's four screws that hold the uh, bridge plate in, in position, and that's not dissimilar to a pen reel. The pen also has the, uh, the four screws holding that in. So we'll go ahead and, uh, and pull those out. And again, you want to be careful because when this comes through, there's going to be a spring under there holding the anti-reverse dog. Um, <laughs> and because of the rarity and the age of this reel, you do not want to lose that screw. And um, also, I haven't been able to find a source for drags, so we'll talk about that in a moment if these drags are bad. But I do find that the Pen 60 drag set does uh, line up pretty closely with this. Uh, it does require just a little bit of scissoring to trim it down, but uh, you could use the Pen 60 uh, drag set if needed. Okay, so I cupped my hand, I pulled those things, I pushed that through. Hopefully I'm holding the spring under here. I didn't see anything shoot out, but just a word of caution if you are working on that reel that you better be prepared for that. Okay, so here we go. I've taken that off. Here's your bridge. Here's your anti-reverse dog, and here's that spring I was referring to. So again, I don't know where the parts are. You might be able to find them on eBay from somebody who's got a scrap reel, or you may have a donor reel, or you may have a pile of reels like I do, uh, in which case you might go to a source and, uh, and get those pieces if they were missing. But it's better in terms of prevention if you just do it the way I did it. Cup it, and uh, hopefully you're not, uh, not looking around for that. You'll also notice I'm putting all my pieces into a parts tray. I like to do that so I keep track of them as we uh, uh, repair this and I know at the end how to go through that. Okay, I'm going to remove this now. There's a spring under here. I want to make sure that uh, it's disengaged. This is the engaging way, so this is disengaged here. I'm going to remove that uh, spool gear. And then there's a spring under here again. So I want to make sure that that spring comes out clearly. This is the only piece that they didn't do in stainless for some reason, and it rusts. Uh, not much you can do about that. All right, there's a little bit of uh, cooking here, so I'm going to just take uh, WD-40, just give that a little quick spray to clean that up. And if you've watched my videos on how to set your bench up for uh, real repair, I recommend cotton swabs and paper towels. They're great uh, with a general degreaser like the uh, WD-40 or uh, Purple Power if the grease is a little bit uh, more uh, stuck, or if you got fish scales or things like that, then the Purple Power is, is a nice product to use to clear all of that stuff up. Okay, so this side plate cleaned up nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, put the gearing uh, position back. So if you, uh, if you noticed how we did that, there was a big spring, it sits in a cavity in the side plate. Then we're gonna put the metal retainer on. The metal, metal retainer sits in a little cavity up top here and slides under under that uh, toggle there for the free spool and then I'm going to uh, do a quick lube here. I'm going to use blue grease on the bushing that holds the back end of the spool. Make sure that we get some uh, lube in there. I'm going to check the spool gear to make sure that all of the teeth are uh, properly positioned, that there's none that are bent or broken. These are good. And then I just slide that, uh, well, probably should put a little bit of grease, a little bit of lube on the top and bottom of this, just so that it spins freely. That's the whole idea behind uh, maintaining your uh, wheels. Then we'll put a little bit up top here so that this toggle as it goes through has a, a, a slippery surface to work on as well. So, just going to go back and reset this. Make sure that that little uh, the spring is riding on the, uh, the little nub inside there. And we'll go ahead and put the spool gear in. And then now I'm going to trip that, uh, that lever to hold this down as we work on the rest of the reel. Okay, so now the bridge is very similar to a pen bridge. It has a main gear, 
and it has a drag stack inside of it. I'm hoping that these drags are okay. If they're not, I'll show you how you would go about uh, replacing those if you could not find originals. And uh, I haven't looked for them recently, but uh, I, I do know how to get by it if you can't find the originals. So these are fabric drags. Fabric drags get grease, and I use Cal's uh, Universal uh, Drag Grease. I put a little bit on each side. Work it in with my glove. It's another reason that you've seen me I have a latex glove on here that keeps the contaminants off my hands, but it also enables me to do things like this, where I can uh, work on uh, working grease in and so on. The metal washer is next, and just like the pens, it has two circular metal washers and it has one that's eared. So uh, the eared one always goes in the middle of the drag stacks. Right, I'm going to work that in with the glove again. You want to keep these greased because you want to make sure that they uh, have maximum flexibility for your uh, your drags for best performance. If they dry out, they're no good. If they dry out, they tend to stick to the metal washers and then uh, inhibit performance. Uh, so if you keep them greased, that's great. Also, another good time to tell you if you do uh, fish a reel like this, that you want to make sure that you back the drags off when you're done uh, with your fishing session. That way uh, you won't squeeze the grease out and it won't, uh, it'll help prevent that drying. Okay, so the three of those washers are in and then there's a cap washer that goes on top of that. And then we can just reinstall this. So I'm going to take the time now to put a little bit of grease on that uh, uh, spool gear and then we'll be able to reinstall. So there's a anti-reverse dog here, much like the pen. We're going to go ahead and we're going to partially install this just like we would a pen. We're going to go put that anti-reverse dog in and then this is the cavity where that spring came out of. And because that's a spring you want to make sure that you're very careful in how you reinstall that so it doesn't shoot out uh, before you have it properly positioned like that. Alright, once you're done with that you can flip this the rest of the way. Line up a screw hole. In this case, I left one of those screws in there, so we can just partially tighten that screw down as we go to work on the other three, making sure that they're all centered and uh, and uh, seated before we go ahead and uh, and tighten them all down. All right. So, and I like to use an X pattern on these, so uh, I'm going to go bottom top, bottom top. Now, unlike the, uh, the pen reels, all four of these screws are the same. So there's no requirement there to uh, go bottom with the threaded and top with the partially threaded on these. They're all the same length and there's no, uh, no problem with which way you put these things back in. Okay, so now that I have them all four seated, now I'm going to go tighten them down the rest of the way. Take my grease out of the way here. We'll just do a quick test here, make sure it's working. It's working and just test the anti-reverse dog. That's in position as well. You can see from the back how that uh, how that looks. All right, now we're going to go back and put that uh, chrome trim ring back on. And what I was saying about before, if you take those, um, if you take these out, um, oh, I forgot to mention on a trim ring, there's a little indentation on one side that sits in the indentation here to get it properly seated. So you have to actually put that piece in before you can bring the rest down. And then you may need a centering pin, pin just to bring these over. So there's two, the, the two bottom ones of these are just uh, studs on the back of the reel. There is no screw that goes through. Make sure that you have that properly lined up. Then we can come over here. I'll put a little bit more of the blue grease on the the end of the spool here, the spool shaft. I'm going to take this and put that back on. And then you got to line that up so that your stud clicks into that hole. And then you can use the four screws here that came out of that side plate to complete the, uh, the assembly. All right, so these are nice because they have the, the little finger grabs on them. You can uh, actually start them by turning these. And then you can finish them with the 
screwdriver. Kind of like what Daiwa does with their uh, their C-Line uh, 50H series where you have the, uh, the ability to do those turns there. All right, he's done here. And we're just a couple of pieces away from uh, making sure that this is done now. So it's, it's a classic reel. All four of those reels that I showed you, the 600 series, are all built the same way. Technology, just uh, bigger uh, side plates, bigger spools. There's also another one I didn't, uh, didn't find in the pile I was looking at. There's a narrow chassis like the Pen 155 as well. A little bit of <laughs> real grease uh, oil inside the pinion shaft. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, star drag nut on. minute to get that seated properly as well. I've got the post turning so if you just hold it with it's not seated properly. Always something on these reels that get you. There we go. All right. Put the uh, coffee grinder back on. Handle nut. Once you have the handle on, you can tighten down the drags the rest of the way. And then uh, grab that 6 0 uh, wrench there, or if you were lucky enough to have a, uh, a Garcia wrench. Go ahead and grab that. And it's just a matter of lining this little fork up here for the uh, hold fast screw. I'm not off that much, but it's just uh, it's a matter of just small turns and eventually it does line up with the set hole. One more screw here. And this can go fishing. This is, uh, this is set up. It's mechanically sound. It's, the drags are in good condition. They've been uh, They've been serviced, and uh, if you wanted to take it, uh, it would be a, a nice reel to uh, to do some motion fishing with, uh, or it can go on the shelf for display. Uh, either way, it's uh, that's just how you tune them up, and, uh, and we're done. So uh, we got a nice, smooth operating reel here, and this is what I mean by quality. There's no shake, there's no shimmy, there's nothing on this reel. It's just a smooth turning, beautifully engineered reel from the 60s and the 70s. So and the drags are holding wonderfully. So uh, I, I hope uh, if you have one of these that you take the time to tune it up, uh, use it. That's what they're meant to be, used uh, or collected either way. And uh, appreciate you uh, uh, viewing the video. Uh, if you like this, please uh, indicate that on YouTube. If you'd like to see more of these, uh, please subscribe to my channel. I work on all kinds of reels. As you can tell, I just uh, worked on a classic and uh, I'll work on plenty more over the next few weeks, and if you subscribe, you'll get a chance to see them. So again, thank you for viewing the video. This is Dennis with 7 Chance Tackle.